preparation. The process starts with trainers on the field, and it, if a physician happens to be there, can help out, and then it's you guys, and then it's the doc. So it's all, we're all in the same, trying to do the same thing safely and prevent <coughs> iatrogenic injury to an already injured person. Because, um, you know, they've done these uh, kinematic uh, studies with x-ray and, and CT and show that just a tiny amount of movement of an already injured spine can cause the final injury. And boy, we all worry about that all the time. And you guys are experts in mobilizing the neck and spine boarding people and, and so we're not going to try to tell you anything new there but we do have probably some questions we can ask you when we're all done i actually have a question the article yeah. spoke about um trainers following the patient or going with the patient to the hospital so they can speak to you know what actually happened with the injury and maybe help with removal of the pads and the helmet there um does that happen here or is that not something that you guys are doing I'd like to happen. No, no uh, not unfortunately. There, then there wouldn't be anyone else okay. at the practice or game or whatever else. And most likely, what would happen is someone else would get hurt because you know how that goes. Kind of Murphy's Law. It's, yeah, oh yeah. I just didn't. Know. I would love to go with. I, I've gone with once or twice when I was in college and kind of helped give an explanation. But mm -hmm. here we just don't have the numbers. Okay. Unfortunately. I think uh, the trainer can give their report to you guys. Sure. Um, or in, in the case the other day, I was able to, you know, I was ready to see what happened and I saw it in front of my eyes and never expected to see that and was able to call that ear doc and give him, you know, a really good description of what I saw and, and what was going on. So I think that's helpful. Always that information from somebody who knows what they're seeing is, is really good. It's good for you. Um, trainers are you know, knowledgeable about that to tell you. I'll definitely give as much information as mm -hmm. if I see it. Sometimes it happens on the other side, away from all the rest of the body. So yeah, and as you know, football game, you can't see everything. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't see a lot of these injuries, and they just something happens, or they come to the sideline and report. So I wanted to just have the um, touch on the issue of face mask removal, um, helmet, shoulder pad removals, the types of face mask and helmets and some of the technology they have on now, uh, which Joel will demonstrate. Um, and we have some questions for you um, re relative to spine boarding. Um, we'll, we'll ask you that later. Um, also some of the local issues that we might have at our school. Monica is a covers Rice Lake sports, but not football. She covered Birchwood football. And that's a whole other level of challenge in a small place like that with a few resources. <coughs> Probably will be interested in hearing you guys what you have to say about about that. You know, as an athletic trainer, they're in a tough spot because they're the person on the field that has the authority to take care of an injury. And we always have to remember that. Sometimes they get people coming out of the stands saying, "Well, I used to do this or I used to do that. I have some." And no, they're there for that. They are responsible until they are confident that the person they're relinquishing control to has a higher level of authority, medical transfer or stabilization they are not to let go and that can be hard I've heard I've heard of uh, 